All right, hello, hello. But don't worry, I, <clears throat> don't worry. I'm not a China hater. Just being Canadian, I'm not too happy with either countries right now, America or China. <laughs> yes, but I love I love China deep down. Twenty years, have a degree, and slowly working on my master's, so I have some experience in Chinese politics here. So yes, the question one here. Did not witness sexual torture, yeah. Perhaps he did not see it, but it doesn't mean it didn't happen. Hmm. Yeah, I gotta please understand it's just because you do not you do not know something doesn't mean it's fake news. I don't know much about microbiology, but it doesn't mean I don't believe in science, so I guess we'll have to wait and see more from the tribunal. Yeah. Uh I guess we can't exactly show pictures of sexual torture on YouTube, huh? Kind of money-wise, illogical, huh? Something about uh, demonetization. I need all the Wu Mao I can get. Hmm. Yeah, I said before, we need to see more of the actual <clears throat> tribunal footage rather than the CNN news. <laughs> Sometimes with CNN, it's like you're watching Fox News, but uh, then again, China, the old school CCTV has pulled off some Fei Hua and Huan Chou Ru Bao, yeah, it's, yeah, no one's too innocent on uh, fake news. Yeah, question two, zero evidence shown. Well, the picture of the tiger chair there, <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, yeah, well, we got both sides. We've got them, the Uyghur kindergarten teacher saying one thing, the cop saying the other, but where's the truth, huh? Yeah. And I guess, yes, yeah, with them, um, this really comes down to the corruption. There's been huge changes in the, in the police forces and security forces in China. And it used to be <clears throat> so corrupt yeah, you could still say they are, but it's not as much as it was 20 years ago, or the stories I heard back in the 80s or 90s, oof. Yeah, yeah, it's um, <clears throat> that two-face, yeah, Lian, Lian, Yang Lian, Yang Mian, whatever, Lian Zhe. Not in the mood. Yeah, that's part of the anti-corruption campaign that's been going on, so, uh, rightfully so. Gone are the days of Guangxi, yeah, now it's all by the book, rightfully so. Another evidence, yeah, the electric batons, oh yeah. I remember back in 07, I was traveling through there, um, visiting some friends, and you could buy those electronic batons on the street near the train station. What was that, Hongbao Guang, Guangchang there? Hongbo Guangchang, and oh yeah, I thought about buying one of those, but the, the RCMP police would not be happy with that again. What are you doing with this? Made in China. Yeah, I want to protect myself for some meth fentanyl junkies over there, yeah. Sorry. Uh, another way for zero evidence, but he had to protect his face, huh? His family and friends are still there, and wouldn't you two? Wouldn't I? Wouldn't we all go to great lengths to protect our families, yeah? say something wrong on the internet. I don't want my sisters to be bothered. Come after me, not my family. Um, yeah, you were saying, yeah, it's not, yeah, about uh, on the badge there. We'll talk more about that next question. Yeah, I guess it wouldn't say Xinjiang, Xinjiang Chu area autonomous region, but uh, you know, I'll talk more of that in a bit. Yeah, question three, serious terrorism. Yeah, this is where you want to talk to me, not this shit penza, shit penza, and uh, this Guaylao 86, and yeah, yeah, you want to come to me when it comes to uh, Zhongguor, Zhengzhi, Li Shi, and Fa Lu, Fa Zhi. So yeah, there's some very serious <coughs> terrorism in Xinjiang. I can't deny it. We saw the videos and uh, yeah, I'm thinking the higher ups told him, yeah, you're going to a war zone. This is what you expect. You're going to get there. 
And maybe he was told, oh, this is some kind of heart, win the hearts and minds, like those American a-holes tried in Afghanistan. <laughs> what was it, 014, 016, that incident with the, those cowboys hiding out in the caves and the PLA came in and with the flamethrowers? Yeah, BBC, I'll link that article wherever, wherever. And then... Um, the other incident was the, <coughs> the Kunming, the Kunming knife stabbing incident. That was crazy. Yeah, it really pissed me off. Makes me... Uh, how do I put this? Since I'm a little angry with China and America because of the two Michaels, I wouldn't put it past the Ministry of State Security or the Public Security Bureau to pull off some kind of false flag operation. Huh? Reminds me of the Americans in the... Vietnam, the Gulf of Tonkin incident. Yeah, manufacture something, huh? Yeah. What's the first casualty in war, huh? The truth or innocence, huh? But yeah, China's pretty Machiavellian right now, yeah. Oh, wolf warrior, huh? It's better to strike first, yes. Uh, what is it, what is it, what's it say? This, better to ask forgiveness than permission. <laughs> But, yeah, that knife incident was crazy, and, and uh, I do honestly feel safer in China than I do here in, um, in British Columbia. Okay, it's, it's, yeah, yeah, it's, ooh, even, even at times when I go to America, I feel very really scared. I'm safe here in Canada. <clears throat> Perhaps I'll never leave. <clears throat> it's dangerous out there in the world. Yes, dark times we live in. So I'll link an article to the Kunming incident from CBC News. You know, talk about fake Canadian news, yeah? You little shit trollers, go after them if CNN is too boring for you. Um, and I guess really, well, the, the Uyghurs and the Han have been coexisting for thousands of years on the on the Silk Road, but uh, the real big incident all happened back in 20, 2009, 2010, the Uemuchi Ride, which actually started in uh, Guangdong there, a little factory not too far from uh, Dong, Guangdong, Dongguan. Uh, I used to live in Foshan, so... Yeah, that, that was the... Yeah, I have, to, I, forgot, I have to remind myself about some of that research again. But yeah, started in Guangzhou, spread to Uemuchi, and yeah, there's a lot more people killed than officially reported. You see? Both governments lie. Hmm, yes. Di Su Wenti, the chief, yeah, rank on table 10 years. Well, you have to correct me if I'm wrong, but it's hard to see that, and I don't want to see this Photoshop bullshit meme shit anymore. Yeah, Officer Jiang there, <clears throat> I think he might be third class commissioner, and you have to see that. I'm not in the mood to see that. Yeah, it's not that high. I believe it's possible. Like, I've, I've, a lot of my friends, PLA, PL, uh, PSB, and I've seen some older ones with low rank and young ones with high rank. And, uh, yeah, I never asked them, like, how long they've been serving. I just know they've been doing it their whole lives and will do it. But I, I it's just uh, police officers and quite corrupt. It's like in New York or something that I could imagine cops back in the 60s and 70s a lot more different than they are now. It's just like China. Rule of law. Oh yeah. Reform. <clears throat> yeah. I guess he was maybe really good at his job and uh, yeah, gave him promotion. But like he said, there was a lot of different police from all over China brought into Xinjiang. A few of my friends went. I didn't see them for nine months. Oh, oh, oh. Deng Xia. Sorry, interruptus maximus. I, I know I have to get a better uh, mic. Um, yeah, some of my Chinese friends went, went off um, Xinjiang. I didn't see them for nine months and all, and obviously they couldn't talk about where they were. Some went to Kashgar and uh, Koral, I forgot, whatever. I seen some of the comments, his uniform. Yeah. Yeah, perhaps in other countries it's required to hand in, but you know how it is in China, easy to get a uniform. Even the children can get one, huh? <laughs> oh. Yes, um... Yeah, also part of question uh, four here. 
Yeah, it's, all the, it's hard to tell the difference anymore between the Public Security Bureau, the Ministry of State Security, and the People's Armed Police. It's just like in America, you cowboy Texans, whatever, FBI, <gasps> CIA, whatever, and yeah, it's all, it's all guardians of the state, as Plato would say. And finally, question five, got to wrap this up here. Um, CNN shows schools, not internment camps. Yeah, well, they call it vocational schools, but aren't schools a lot like prison, huh, students? Yeah, got to see some footage from the cotton fields and the wheat fields there and the, the grape harvest. Yeah, I guess that's where they sent some of the hooligans, huh? It's just like my friend's parents there, Sha Gang, huh? sent down youth. <laughs> yeah, and then one final note here, because I'm loud and I got to be quiet. And uh, yeah, well, in regards to my Orange Lives Matter shirt, in the First Nations, there's a word for this we have here. They're called residential schools. Anyways, talk later. Sorry, sorry.